Um, polysaccharides. This is one example of a polysaccharide. And remember, poly, the prefix poly, means many. Could be more than two. It doesn't matter how many they are. And starch, you know, so things with starch are like potatoes um, and bread, things that have starch in them. This is what starch looks like. It is a bunch. This molecule right here is glucose. And this is actually a bunch of glucose molecules linked together. So we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger here. So lots of these occurred here. And then you've got some branching. Again, you don't have to worry about it. But you do need to know that starch is only found in plants. So starch is actually used for energy storage in plants. So when plants go through photosynthesis and they make uh, their sugars, they're using them um, they store their extras in um, in starches a lot of the times. Sometimes they store them in oils, like with olive oil or peanut oil, they'll store it in an oil. But this particular one, like for potatoes, a potato is made up entirely of starch, just about. So this potato plant's making all of this extra sugar, and it doesn't need it, but it's getting sun, so it's going to be doing photosynthesis. So it stores its excess energy in this form, in the form of, um, in the form of starch that you see here. So humans don't make starch. We can eat starch, and we think it's delicious, uh, but we do not actually make it. So when plants store, some plants store energy. They store their excess energy. Um, in the form of starch. Um, in animals, and if you notice, if you go back, these two things are pretty similar looking. And you, the only difference that you need to know, you don't have to know the difference between the structure at all, because that's not really important. So if we're looking at the structure over here, they're really, really close. If we go back, so here, this other thing, you don't need to know the difference in structure, but you need to know that humans and animals store excess energy as glycogen before it turns, they store it as fat. So animals store excess energy as glycogen. That's kind of a messed up C. It's supposed to be a C there. Sorry. Um, so glycogen is found um, a lot of the times in your muscle cells and your liver is what makes all this happen. So let's say you are eating a bunch of candy and of course it's going to give you a lot of energy. Um, and then if you retain that energy, if you don't burn it, then your liver is going to store it as glycogen first. And then if you're still eating more and more and more carbohydrate, it's actually going to convert that glycogen into a fat, which we'll talk about in our next video. Um, so you've, again, you've, it says glucose monomer this time. You got these glucose molecules here, and they're all linked together in the same way. So they're linked through or via dehydration, and they are digested. So I'm gonna write digested. I'm kind of running out of room here. Digested via hydrolysis. Same exact pattern that we talked about, hydrolysis. The same pattern that we talked about um, in our similarities video. All of the monomer, all of our poly, uh, polymers for all of four of our macromolecules are made via dehydra dehydration and then broken apart or digested via hydrolysis. So the difference again, one of the, the big difference between um, polysaccharide and plants, so the, here's starch and glycogen and that's the big difference that you need to know. You don't have to know anything about the structure or a lot about the structure. Um, another interesting thing about uh, a carbohydrate for this very essential for all life on earth uh, is cellulose. Now cellulose is tricky because humans cannot, I should make this in all caps, cannot digest Humans cannot digest cellulose. It's just the way that it's linked. Our enzymes don't fit around this molecule in the way that we want them to fit around them. Um, so we cannot digest 
cellulose, which means we can't actually get any of the energy from it. You'll notice that once again, this is a glucose. This is a glucose monomer linked, but they're ch it's linked up in different ways. So if you were to eat a diet of just nothing but grass, you couldn't break it down. You would no you would starve to death. You would not get energy, any energy from it. Um, cellulose is really important for you to eat um, because this is what we call fiber. And fiber is really good for cleaning out your intestines. So um, you put food in there and over your whole lifetime, you're eating all this food and sometimes little bits and pieces of the food kind of stay in there. I don't know, it's just the way that it works. Cellulose is good um, because it helps to clean your system out. So it's like keeps the cells in there healthy and kind of, um, it's kind of like a gut brush, right? So instead of a toothbrush, we're gonna call it a gut brush. So it is really important to get in your diet. Um, and plants that contain lots of cellulose often have other good qualities as too. So like kale or, um, you know, lettuce is, lettuce is mostly water, but there's some cellulose in there. Um, but any sort of greens, mustard greens, collard greens, um, spinach has good cellulose in, you can't digest it. So it goes through there and just cleans out your system. Um, but cellulose, of course, is made by plants, and they use it for cell walls. So cellulose is also, I'm going to draw this other arrow over here, this is one of the structural carbohydrates that we talk about because they're using it for cell walls, and um, those cell walls help kind of give support and structure to the plant. That's why plants can stand upright because they don't have any bones. Uh, the cellulose in their cell walls helps them to stay upright. This is um, colorized an SEM. An SEM is a scanning electron micrograph. So this is actually cellulose in here, and it's pictured. Uh, you can see all the fibers, and this is like a thousand times bigger than it actually is. So this is way bigger than you would ever be able to see with your own eyes. But this is what cellulose looks like. It's all this kind of fibrous, connective sort of tissue that creates a mesh framework um, around plants. So, you know, you've got inside, you would have the cell, and then outside, you've got all of this fiber and stuff um, that helps give it structure. So, that's what plants use to keep them upright and give them structure instead of bones. They don't have bones and they don't have, it's kind of like a plant exoskeleton. Um, but that's just kind of a cool photo and that's why I wanted you, uh, wanted you to see it. Important things to remember. Important things to remember. First, um, one unit of sugar is called uh, a monosaccharide, so that's one sugar. An example would be glucose. Uh, the second thing to remember is uh, disaccharide, and disaccharide means two. An example of that is sucrose. So that's table sugar or sugar you find in apples or anything that's sweet. Uh, the third thing to remember is polysaccharide, and that means more than two. An example of that, we just went through several examples. Uh, starch is a good example. If you're talking about an animal, it would be uh, uh, glycogen. And if you're talking about structure and not energy, then it would be cellulose. Starch, glycogen, excuse me, starch, glycogen, and cellulose, and you need to know the difference between those, which is where they are found. So starch is plants, glycogen is animals, and cellulose is structural for plants as well. Why cellulose is important, remember I said it was a gut brush, so it helped to keep animals healthy by cleaning out their intestines and keeping those clean, um, and it's also used uh, for plant cell walls. Remember, animals cannot digest it. Now you might think, Miss Tucker, there are lots of things that eat grass, right? Cows eat grass. Goats eat everything. I saw a goat eat a whole avocado pit one time. It was totally insane. Cellulose um, is not digestible by animals, but cows have, you know, rumen. They have like four or five chambered stomachs or something crazy. Don't quote me on that. 
um, and there are bacteria that live in there and those bacteria actually break the grass down for the cows. So the cows chew it a lot, chew it a lot, they swallow it, it goes in there, the bacteria work on it, start breaking down all those uh, diet or you know, all of this the cellulose structure and then cows of course regurgitate it and then chew on it some more. So the cows and the bacteria are working together um, in order to get the nutritional value out of the cellulose. Bison, anything that is hooved and eats grass is all kind of in the same group of animals. Um, and so th those animals actually do get deer, you know, those animals actually do get um, energy out of the grass with the help of bacteria that they have evolved, um, that they have evolved to live in their stomach. And of course, some structures and uses. So you definitely want to remember, um, you know, kind of the overall picture. This this kind of plays into these guys about mono dye and polysaccharides, um, and then some of the uses. You know, it's used for energy immediately. It's used for long term energy, and it's used for structure. And remember that little juicy tidbit that I gave you. And I'm going to put another star here so you don't forget it, is that they end in O-S-E. So the suffix for uh, carbohydrates is O-S. Glucose, fructose, um, cellulose. Starch is kind of a layman's term. I'm sure if we saw the actual chemical term name for it, it would end in O-S-E. And that's a really easy way to be able to recognize when you are looking at a carbohydrate. That's all I've got for today. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to jot those down. Don't forget to take the quiz, and I will see you very soon. Thanks.